I'm Scott Allen Miller, and this is my vlog of daily life living in Leon, Nicaragua. Today we have a question that a lot of people ask uh, pretty commonly. This is a little bit more specific, but the basics are still the same. How do you know when you can and can't do a work-like activity like investing or working a job here in Nicaragua? What exactly are the rules? Why is it so complicated? It's actually super simple, but if you're not used to this aspect of business, it can be obviously something people aren't used to and it can may seem confusing. So we're going to dig into his scenario, which will probably explain things for everyone right after the bump. All right, the viewer asked the question, and I don't have it in front of me, so I don't have your name. I'm sorry. I think it's Steve. So Steve asks, and if it's not Steve, I apologize. Someone who I think his name is Steve asks, so my girlfriend is allowed to work remotely, but I'm not allowed to work, uh, but am I able to invest? So let's break this down because everything you need to know is in that statement. It should be pretty straightforward, but if you're not used to these things, if you've never owned businesses and worked with uh, people working across jurisdictions, a lot of these things may be opaque, but with a little bit of explanation, I hope we can break this down for everyone into a way that is just crystal clear and everyone can understand. So there's a couple different things we're going to look at. One is the uh, where you work. So from a purely business perspective, where business is done is unrelated to where a human is. So considering where the human is sitting is always a mistake. This is something that people do very often because humans have a tendency to think about where they work. If you say, where do you work? People say, I work from home or uh, I, I work from, from Pennsylvania. And in doing that, they're saying where they are. That is not where the work is done. The work is done where the work is done. It's hard to describe where the work is done. As someone who works with an international company, we know where our work is being done. It's being done at client sites all over the United States, right? We know exactly where it's being done and it's not where the people are because the people aren't there, right? They're working from home or whatever. And it's generally pretty clear that work isn't being done from home in most cases. Work happens where the business is. So the business, in this case, in Steve's example, his girlfriend is working remote. So the word remote should alone tell you what's going on. It's remote where she is physically is not where she's working. She's remote from the work. So where the work is, is what determines its jurisdiction. So in this now, there are absolutely countries that consider where the human is. It's not that you can't do that. Every sovereign nation has its own right to use whatever determination it wants to use. But places like the United States and Nicaragua do not do that, at least not in this context. So they're considering where the work is done. And most importantly, what we're talking about is where the work is done. Every country considers where the work is done to be one thing and where you are physically a separate thing. How they treat those as far as legality, taxation and, and those kinds of things, visas, is different. Here in Nicaragua, you have unlimited right to work remotely. That is, you're allowed to physically reside in Nicaragua. There is no limits on that. And you can work wherever you want. There's no limits on that. So your girlfriend in this case is working remote. That tells you everything you need to know. Her job is remote, which means in this context, not in Nicaragua. And so since her job is not in Nicaragua, she's free to work it. We're going to break that down more in a bit. Now, when Steve asks, can I really hope his name is Steve, or this is going to be annoying. Uh, <laughs> if Steve asks, can I work in Nicaragua? No, neither you nor your girlfriend can work in Nicaragua, presuming you're not citizens. That's not something you can do. You can work from Nicaragua. You may be physically existing in Nicaragua and do work other places, but you cannot work in Nicaragua. So that hopefully explains. It's the physical presence of the business that is being done, not the physical presence of the worker. Okay, the second piece is he, he's, he asks about investment because he works in real estate development. So this is also very important. So if you, no matter where you live, the idea of working for someone that is drawing a salary or an hourly pay, right, you're getting a paycheck, that is being a worker. It's very straightforward. Investing is like buying stocks, right? You go to Vanguard, you go to uh, Bank of America, you open a brokerage account, you go buy a few shares of IBM. That does not imply that you work at IBM. You do not have the right to just walk in the doors at IBM. You do not get a paycheck from IBM, nothing of the sort. 
it is generally clear that you are in no way an employee of IBM. You're a person who has invested in that business. Maybe a very small percentage, maybe all of it. Whether you buy one share of IBM or all the shares of IBM, that would be amazing, go for that, uh, doesn't make any difference. As far as you're just an investor, you're not a worker. At some point, you have enough power as an investor to hire yourself if you'd like. But that is a completely unrelated thing. The legal act of being an employee and the legal act of owning some percentage from Point point or point zero 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 one to one hundred percent are are very discreet and unrelated. You can own all the stocks in the world and never be an employee and never be able to draw a salary and never say that you're able to work for anyone or anything of the sort. A person who's unemployable, a criminal that could never be hired in a company that that is legally barred from hiring criminals can still have them invest because they're simply giving money. They don't get any direct insight. They don't have access to anything. Investing is very different. So I know when you're talking about small businesses, it is common for the ideas of ownership and the ideas of working for your own business to often become convoluted. But the idea of being an employee and doing work for a place that you have invested in and being an investor in them are unrelated concepts. And to show in the U.S. and most countries how discreet these are, they have two completely different tax regimes for these. When you're dealing with being an employee, it's called an income tax, at least in most countries, or that's the concept. It's an tax on the income that you make as a worker. When you're dealing with investments and getting money from that, it is a capital gains tax. They are very different tax systems. Now, in different cases, one might be better than the other. They have different rates. They have a lot of different factors involved. I'm not saying one is good and one is bad, simply that they are two different mechanisms that are used for taxation. And once you really internalize that, it basically explains everything you would need to know. Beyond that, Nicaragua works in an incredibly logical way. So you say, what would be the smartest thing for Nicaragua to do? Oh, that's what they do. That's straightforward. But let's break this down. So if you're going to invest in Nicaragua, what are your limitations on that? None. There's no limitations. You do not have to be in Nicaragua to invest. You don't have to be a on a tourist visa to invest. You don't have to have residency to invest. You don't have to have citizenship to invest. You, whoever you are that is watching this video, I guarantee every single one of you has the right to invest in Nicaragua right now without visiting. That is just investment is completely open. You may start your own business from scratch or you may uh, buy a portion of an existing business or, of course, go in with friends and start a new business conglomerate as a group. All of that can be done remotely. All of that is commonly done remotely. There's investors often don't travel to the countries that they're going to be investing in at least not at the time that they're doing the investment. Uh, it is smart to visit a country before you invest in it because it's really easy to get misled. Otherwise, that's a completely different business discussion. From a legal and what can you do in Nicaragua discussion, you may buy and sell businesses, including real estate, which is not a business, obviously, but it, as a similar type thing, unlimited without being here under any residency system, whether it's non-tourist, tourist, resident, citizen, whatever. So that is wide open. Investment is easy. And you can. And if you come to the country, that doesn't somehow make it that you can't invest anymore. And all these things are really important because if you couldn't invest, it would make it very difficult to buy a house, for example. Not that they couldn't be separated, but it would be very complicated and weird if they had made them separate in such a way that you could buy property but not a business to hold that property or couldn't operate that as a business in some way. So everything is very straightforward as far as that goes. And employment is similar. Can you be an employee in Nicaragua? Absolutely not. No, that is something you can't be. You can't do anything that takes away jobs. Investing, this is the, so this is the second thing, right? That's the first piece is just explaining the legality. The second piece is we're going to explain the why. The why is that, and, and every country has a different economic goal from their tax system, from their employment system, things like that. So in the United States, for example, the interest of creating jobs is very low. Yes, they like to create jobs, but they're short on workers in general. So creating a bunch of new jobs is not necessarily beneficial. In some cases, it's actually detrimental. So they're not going to put a lot of effort into promoting that. They have other things that they need to promote, such as getting more workers with specific skills into the country, just as an example, or collecting higher tax revenue. In Nicaragua, the primary concern over the last many years is getting more jobs. So every law and every tax decision is essentially made with this really strong mindset of how does this law, rule, pressure, whatever it is, encourage the creation of jobs. 
of Nicaraguans. They don't want to create jobs for foreigners. Not that they don't want to, like if they had a checkbox, ooh, employ the world, sure, they'd be happy to do so. But they're not going to do it at the expense of Nicaraguan workers. The mandate of a government is to protect its citizens, and that is exactly what Nicaragua is going to do. It's very good at that. It's very passionate about protecting Nicaraguan citizens. And so we see this in these tax and investment regimes that say, as a uh, investor, you are wide open to do anything you want because investment never takes away jobs. Not really. If you invest in a country, you may fail to create jobs. But the act of investing and creating no jobs almost guarantees that you are going to pump money into the economy and get nothing out. If you never create any jobs, chances are your business just failed. But failed businesses still put money into the economy, maybe very little. But as an example, you decide to open up a new restaurant, so you put in $10,000 opening a new restaurant. You never get very far. You realize that the uh, market isn't there for it. You find that the employment laws are too onerous, and you just decide it's not something you can do. But you put in $10,000 paying people to run around, do some research. Maybe you uh, bought a little bit of land and just didn't build on it, whatever. We're talking about a minimum amount of money as a, as a minimal example. And you just give up. Well, that money's going to stay in country. So Nicaragua is not concerned that you spent $10,000 and failed as a business because the country gained $10,000 out of it. It was worth the effort to let you do so. If you were to be successful and that restaurant actually got built, well, you're going to pay for people to construct that restaurant. You're going to pay for the equipment to go into the restaurant. So you're creating jobs in the sales and restaurant supply channel and the construction channel, in the real estate channel, all these different places you're helping create jobs, maybe fractional jobs, right? You're not hiring entire new people, but across all the different things you're doing, you're probably creating at least a large amount of hourly employment. Eventually, once your restaurant is up and running, someone's got to work there. And while under certain circumstances, it could be you without a salary, which is scary, but you are under certain circumstances able to work your own business as long as you are only making your money from the profits as an investor and you're only allowing yourself to work there. But that's a gray area. So you want to be careful with that. Make sure your lawyer has cleared that, that you're going to pass an inspection if you don't have any employees but are working there. That won't work for investor residency, but it might be okay for just wanting to run a business. Uh, but you're not going to be taking away jobs. You're almost certainly going to create a few, if not many, jobs. A restaurant is almost guaranteed to create four or five full-time jobs once it's done, plus all those fractional ones while you're setting it up. So investment as a pure vehicle on its own is a really good deal for Nicaragua because their concern is getting people from unemployment to employment, and, and investment is a great way to do that. Foreign investment is basically found money uh, as far as creating jobs. So that's heavily encouraged. And then even if your business fails eventually, which is super likely with any business, then at least during that time, it created jobs and those people have put money back into the economy and it just it increases the size of the economic engine. If you want to go take a job and you want to pull a salary, that means by definition there's work to be done in the country and it could be done by a Nicaraguan and you're taking that job away from them. So that is a negative against the employment. And now you could completely live in Nicaragua, spend every penny that you make here in Nicaragua and, and not be a major drain on the country, but you're still a drain because the job that you're doing could have gone to a Nicaraguan who needs that job. If you do the work yourself, even if you pay all your taxes and you live here, you've still left that Nicaraguan without that job. So it's still a negative, even though you've you, you've buffered it a little, you've hedged a little bit, but you haven't actually solved the problem. So that's not something they're going to let you do because unemployment is such a key concern here right now. Someday that's likely to change. And when there's not enough workers, then sure, I guarantee they'll let they'll find ways to let foreigners work, at least in small numbers. But until unemployment isn't the driving economic factor, doing so would be reckless and just insane. Why would they ever let someone do that? Even wanting to do that doesn't make any sense because you the salaries here are so low. If you have the ability to work here, you certainly have the ability to work remotely, and that will pay dividends. That's a pun, not a not an actual thing. Uh, versus working in country, it just it doesn't make sense for Nicaragua to let you, and it doesn't make sense for you to want to. All right, part three is the test, and I have two basic tests that I use to help people understand when a role is going to be allowed as an employee and when a role is not. The first rule is the no Nicaragua rule. So this is an easy one. Take any job that you're considering, whether you're going to do it or not, and say, okay, I can do this job when I live in Nicaragua. Okay. 
but can you do this job if you can't live in Nicaragua? What if you're unable to visit Nicaragua? Let's not say you're banned from the country, let's just say that you broke your leg and you're stuck in Italy indefinitely. Can you do this job if you're not able to get back to Nicaragua? That's a requirement. If a job requires that you are in Nicaragua, then it's going to not be allowed because that is technically a form of employment. Now, you may be skirting some rules somehow and not getting caught. That's plausible. But if you, the question is what is legal, no, you are definitely not legally able to work if your job must have you physically in Nicaragua. That you can be in Nicaragua, absolutely fine. That you must be in Nicaragua is a definite indicator that that is a form of employment that is not open to foreigners. The second rule is the banking rule. Where is your paycheck coming from? Are you being paid in the United States? Are you being paid in Canada? Are you being paid in New Zealand? Are you being paid in Italy? Or are you being paid in Nicaragua? Your pay should be originating from outside the country, and as long as you have a bank account outside the country, it, all of your transactions should be able to happen extranationally, and any money that you're going to use in Nicaragua should be able to be, be, should be only moved into the country via your own accounts, meaning you have a bank account outside the country, you may have a bank account inside the country, or maybe you just have an ATM card, whatever, and you go to your extra national or outside Nicaragua bank and pull that money into Nicaragua. It's absolutely fine to have a Nicaraguan bank, should you like, you go to BAC, you go to LaFise, you open up a bank account, but that's not where your salary is going, that's not where your capital gains are going, that's not where your pay is going. Anything that you have isn't going there, it is going to a bank somewhere else. Then that bank you can transfer into your Nicaraguan bank, but that's you moving your money to yourself. That is not salary. That is not capital gains. That is you moving money between your bank accounts. Absolutely fine. Does sometimes require some paperwork. Sometimes it takes a little bit of a delay, but you're absolutely allowed to do that. No problem at all. That is a really important test. You need to be able to get paid outside the country because otherwise that pay inside the country represents some form of uh, payment transaction that needs to be registered and therefore is going to fail the test. And my third test is the tourist test. This is an important one for everyone. Does your job make it possible for you to go work somewhere when you're on vacation? So you work a job wherever it is, whatever you're doing normally, and uh, you decide to go to you know, France, you're going to go see Paris and eat all kinds of macarons for your vacation. You're going to spend two weeks in France. Are you able to take what you have with you and work from there? If so, that means, yes, your job allows you to work abroad. Now, of course, the first test really determine if you're able to work in Nicaragua. This one determines if your job is capable of working in Nicaragua and helps to explain what's happening. When you're in Nicaragua and you're working remotely, you are a tourist who is working remotely. That is it. Now, some countries have traditionally not allowed this. Costa Rica did not allow this easily until recently. They require a digital nomad visa to allow you to do that. And that's where we talked about earlier that there's a uh, different countries handle your, your physical presence in a different way. But Nicaragua doesn't care what your physical presence is. They only care about where the revenue stream comes from. It's known very famously for having this specialty regime, which is one of the major things that you always want to consider when you're looking at living abroad, that if you live in a lot of countries, the people are like, oh, this country is very affordable. It's very nice and then they find out oh but they don't have the right to work remotely from there that can be a major problem now it doesn't work for everyone some people don't plan to work remotely but the majority of expats are going to have some amount of work remote want to do something that looks like they're working remotely and they want to be able to bring money in they may find that there's a lot of penalties in a lot of countries and a lot of people gloss over that when they're comparing different countries this is a huge deal for Nicaragua that these transactions are always allowed and always go without being taxed and so it doesn't matter what you're doing outside the country. You can be here as a tourist and a resident is like an extended tourist, like they're treated the same. You can do this indefinitely and your outside income is not part of your Nicaraguan tax regime. So only if you have a job here, which again, you're not allowed to have, would you be taxed for income tax here in Nicaragua? So that's, that's an important test that people really don't often think about that they should always think about with a job. Can I go on vacation and keep doing my job? And can you work remote is simply, can you want to go on vacation indefinitely and keep doing your job? Because that's all relocation is, is a vacation that never ends. And that's literally what it is. Like relocation as a concept is a very soft thing. And for most people who are coming to Nicaragua, it is many years of being even within the Nicaraguan regime, legally a tourist and not 
a resident for quite some time. And there's different levels of residence. There's ones that are automatic that people do as a tourist. They're still under a tourist visa, but also a resident. And that there's, there's a lot of overlap there, right? So, so you can think of residency as a form of tourism in most cases. In all cases, these are not disc uh, discrete concepts that exist outside the country or extranationally. So if you're from the US or Canada, for example, what Nicaragua considers you, tourist, soft resident, uh, long-term formal resident. Those are irrelevant factors back in the US or Canada because those are not official international standards like being a citizen and carrying a passport are. Those are very different things and not up for this discussion in any way. Now this wasn't asked, but people often get confused about this and associate it with these things, so I'm gonna talk about it really quickly. When you have a company, it is incorporated and operates somewhere. So I have a company that exists in the United States I also have a company that exists here in Nicaragua. They are discrete entities. They do not mix. They are oil and water to unrelated entities. When the business in the United States makes money, should it ever make money, that would be great. Okay, so if it makes money, its profits are then taxed as capital gains in the United States. Once its capital gains have been taxed, then it can just its capital gains however it likes. But as a U.S. business, it pays U.S. taxes as a business. It is not me. It is not representative of me, right? I'm an investor. It pays its own taxes. It then pays me, and then I have to pay whatever U.S. taxes are appropriate for the way that it pays me and the amounts that it pays me and the amount that I earn and so forth. Americans know how complicated the system is, but that part's straightforward, that I have to pay taxes on that. Businesses in the U.S. pay U.S. taxes, and then employees or investors in the U.S. pay whatever taxes from whatever they get. Same thing in Nicaragua. A Nicaraguan business, should it uh, make profit, even if it doesn't make profit, there's actually a base level tax rate, uh, but it's, it's really low. If you then make profit, you pay additional tax on top of that. That is taxed in country. But again, that is not you being taxed. An investor is not taxed. The business is taxed. And this is the same the world over. This is very straightforward, normal investment stuff, normal business stuff. But if it, a lot, so many people come to places like Nicaragua and look at being a business person for the first time, and so a lot of these things are brand new to them, and they're confused and, and it's very common when you're dealing with small businesses that people will start to blend themselves as being an employee and the business and being an investor all into one thing but they are very discrete things the investor in a business the business itself and the the employees of those business are three completely unique roles that if you are doing all three of them you have to treat them as three separate things you can't for example uh, if you employ yourself you have to pay yourself minimum wage Right now, of course, you can't employ yourself here in Nicaragua. That would not be allowed. But if you're in the United States and you employ yourself, you have to honor minimum wage laws for yourself. You have to honor break laws and, and income reporting laws and all kinds of complex things that you don't have to do if you're not an employee. But when you're an employee, you absolutely have to do and that you're the owner and the employee is irrelevant. So here in Nicaragua, you have a business that makes money. It pays taxes in Nicaragua. It can then disperse capital gains in Nicaragua or abroad. So if you're making capital gains off of money made in Nicaragua, you may have to pay taxes on that depending on a number of factors. I am not a Nicaraguan tax authority or consultant or anything of the sort. If you get into a situation where you have a Nicaraguan company dispersing profits to you, you absolutely need an accountant and a lawyer from Nicaragua who are going to dig into exactly what your tax liabilities and burdens and so forth should be. And they should do that long before you become profitable so that you're doing so in a correct way to you know make your profits or whatever. But that is that is the very important thing that people often don't understand is they confuse income tax on a foreign national, right? So in my example, I'm an American tourist in Nicaragua. So taxing my income is a very strange thing to do against a tourist, right? Like that doesn't make sense anywhere in the world. You would never expect that to happen. It does happen some places, but it's very weird and rare. So me as a working American is one thing. And Nicaraguan business that may make profits is a completely different animal in that it's a business, not a person, that it's Nicaraguan, not uh, an American. So there's no association. Every single factor is different. So of course, a Nicaraguan business is going to pay uh, normal business taxes. Who invests in it doesn't change the tax regime of the business. The same as if uh, you know a, a Brit decides to open a restaurant in the United States, that restaurant doesn't get out of paying American taxes because the investor is from another country. It doesn't work that way at all. The business pays normal taxes. The Who is the investor in it is generally blind. They don't even know. They don't care because they only get paid in capital gains at the end of the day. And then the capital gains process is what's taxed and is public, not the who is invested when there's no money. If you're not making profit, generally, it's it's all very blind because, well, 
why not? <laughs> There's very little, very little reason to need to uh, disclose anything at that point. Now, of course, some people start businesses and employ themselves and pay themselves that way instead of taking capital gains. That is absolutely fine, but you just have to be aware if you're doing that in the United States, then you're an American employee and you have to treat yourself that way and you have to deal with all that stuff in the United States. If you're in Nicaragua, you can't employ yourself. That's just not an option. So that's one of the spots where things are different. Often Nicaraguan businesses, you'll find people employing themselves or other investors or their family. And there's often reasons that you want to do that because uh, it can make some things a lot more clear, right? Oh, you, well, you have a family, you have 10 people, they go and invest together on a restaurant, but only one of them is gonna work in that restaurant. Well, the one who works and makes it all happen, um, instead of giving them a larger piece of the investment pie, maybe you make them an employee. So as long as they're working and running the restaurant, they get paid a salary that is commensurate with the work that they're doing. And then they make whatever money off of the investment that they did. So if we have 10, owners, they each own 10%, they get their their uh, capital gains from their portion, but the person who's working gets paid as a salary. If they were to stop working, then they would not get that salary, they'd still get their capital gains. This system is very standard for businesses the world over to allow people who are investors to also work and to compensate them in a way that makes sense. If you try to do anything else, it gets really awkward. So these are the systems that are often in place and why people have a tendency to mix these things together. But overall, the employment and investing situation here in Nicaragua is very good and very very straightforward and obvious when you understand what the underlying goals are and understand how jurisdictions work for those two different aspects of your physical locality and the place of business. And then simply knowing which laws apply here in Nicaragua. Of course, there is the obvious negative that if you decide you want a local job or you want to leverage local salaries uh, as a means to pay yourself from within a job, you don't have those options available to you. That's a negative, but trust me, it is an incredibly minor negative. It sounds like a negative when you haven't had time to do all your research, you haven't been boots on the ground, but once you are very quickly, it becomes obvious that those aren't things that would be good for you to do. And in reality, while yes, offering you more choices is generally good for you, Overall, this is a situation where the Nicaraguan government is actually protecting you from yourself. Not intentionally, that's not their goal in this particular case, but it is. it ends up being what's happening. The number of people that I talk to that are absolutely obsessed with the idea of coming and working in person in Nicaragua, not investing, that's its own animal, and I highly encourage people to do it as long as they're doing it with their eyes wide open and knowing how investment works and not experimenting recklessly. But if you want to actually honestly invest in Nicaragua in a smart way that isn't going to harm you because you didn't know what you were doing and it's good for Nicaragua, yeah, absolutely, that's fantastic. But So I encourage that. But when it comes to employment, it once you get here and realize what it's like, it's essentially immediate. You go, oh, no, working as an employee in Nicaragua is absolutely foolish. That makes no sense for me as a foreigner who could be investing, who could be working remotely to want to do that. It's not good for Nicaragua. That's why Nicaragua doesn't let it happen. But it's 99.99% of the time not good for you either. That's super important. Nicaragua is not taking something away from you that you would want to do. They're at at best just protecting you from yourself, and uh, and at, and at worst just, you know, not giving you an option that won't be very good. It's it, it really is not a situation. There should never be a time, uh, in in theory, right? That that you look at Nicaragua and say, but the thing I want is a local job. I do realize that there are a few people who are like, but I, the jobs that I do just they're all in person. I don't know. Every person I've ever talked to that's like that, if we sit down, there's always been some way that we think, of course, it's just theory, we've always come up with some way that we think they could do better, earn more money, be better for their family, have more flexibility, and of course, be better for Nicaragua than whatever it is they thought they had to do. It may involve an incredible amount of life change, uh, but there's always been something that seems like it would probably work out better. And to give an example, you may come down and say, well, I really want to you know, do, do uh, plumbing. Right. Well, the amount of money you can make in doing plumbing in Nicaragua is X. And there's a there's a cap to it. Right. You can only work so many hours in a day. It's not like you can uh, just magically, you know, work a thousand hours a week. You can't do that. So you, you can figure out what the cap is to the market. The most that someone will pay combined with the most hours that you can work. And do you want to do that much? Do you really want to push that hard? Then what if you did something alternative? What if you uh, created an online YouTube channel for this is the first thing that pops into my mind because I do a YouTube channel. But what if you do a YouTube channel for teaching plumbing and you teach specifically specific things and you educate about plumbing in Nicaragua, like there's a number of things you could do. And the chances that that YouTube channel will be able to make more money than being an on the ground plumber because you're doing it in English or because whatever is actually pretty high. 
Now, you can't just not work and make a couple videos and go, wow, I didn't make any money. It takes work just like a real job does. And people who know like this channel barely makes any money at all. And I have to put in an insane amount of time, but I'm also talking about a topic that doesn't generate ad revenue. So there's a lot of ways that I could make money on YouTube, but I choose not to because one, I have a real job and two, I, I do this because I'm passionate about it. I enjoy sharing our experiences, uh, not just with Nicaragua, but Latin America and travel and relocation. And I think this is important information that when I was looking to learn these things, I had very few resources to turn to. And while I was doing that, I kept thinking, boy, these are resources that someone should do. So that's what we're doing. Um, but if, if my goal was to put food on the table, I would do other things and make way more money on YouTube, focus on the algorithm and do all kinds of stuff and not make a video every day. That is definitely not the best way to make money. It's, it is not a super successful uh, process. Every YouTuber will tell you that is not a thing that you do. Uh, but but if, if that's your goal is to live off of YouTube, it is definitely not that hard if you're dedicated. And that's just one of a million different options. But it's an example of how you could take a career like Plum that you can't do here in Nicaragua and turn it into something from Nicaragua where it costs less to make the YouTube channel, the tax situation is better for the YouTube channel, the ease of doing it, like life in general is easier, the, the, like all those things make it so much easier to make a YouTube channel from Nicaragua than from somewhere else. Now, if you want to make a travel show about Santorini, you got to be in Santorini, right? So that's, those shows are, are location constrained. But when you're doing a show about plumbing, why would you make a plumbing show? A plumbing show in the United States has to make $50,000 a year to keep the lights on. But that same plumbing show in Nicaragua could keep the lights on for 10,000 a year or less. That's 1 20th of the audience, but you have the same audience. So there's no reason to have to fight uh, for the, the same success. You could do half the success and have 10 times the living standard. That's probably an exaggeration, four times the living standard here in Nicaragua than, than you could in the United States, even with a lower income. I'm just using the US as an example, uh, simply because you're being creative about how you're doing those things. It's you, you have to think of it a little bit differently. So often workers are conditioned to just think of walking into a, uh, a business saying, here's my resume, please give me a job. And they give you a check locally. Yes, if that's the mindset, Nicaragua doesn't allow that but it shouldn't be something you're seeking. So we have to fix, the, the real thing we need to fix is how you're thinking about jobs and careers and, and income. And once we do that, you're gonna find that Nicaragua, there's gonna be exceptions, but almost always is going to just crush what you're able to earn and how you're able to work if you're living in North America, simply because of, of the things that it offers you. Yes, it's gonna close some doors, but you don't have to work every job. You have to work one job, or you have to have one good investment, and, and putting you in a better position to get the best job is so much more important than just making a lot of bad jobs easily accessible. So yes, be a little bit creative, but if you think broadly, I think you'll find that Nicaragua makes it almost certainly very easy to be very successful, live well, work less, and be happy, and make a positive impact on your environment rather than just being another cog in a giant wheel that you aren't even very aware of. Thanks for joining me. Like and subscribe. If you'd like to help support my project here on YouTube, you can buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash Scott Allen Miller. That comes directly to me. Makes a huge difference. As always, if you'd share on social media, tell someone about the show, friend, family, someone, get them involved, let them know that there is an entire life they may not be considering. I'm not saying Nicaragua is for everyone, but things like this, moving abroad, reconsidering, shaking things up, thinking outside the box, that's the most important thing. There's such a better life for most people if you start thinking creatively and stop being constrained by this is what we always did. I think you'll find that Nicaragua is just a really great example of how that could work for you. Thanks for joining me. I will see you all tomorrow. And I'll probably forget for the early watchers, but we're going to pop up four videos here on the screen. If you'd be so kind as to click on one of them, that'd be awesome. Just let it run in the background. That's okay.